What's up guys, Mike here, welcome back to Game Dev with AI, a place where we're developing our first real-time strategy game, an indie game, just by myself and with the help of the tools of AI. Without any programming skills, we are gonna use the engine called Construct3, which is a great solution for people like me who don't know any C++ or any complex coding and we're just using visual programming. We already made a very good progress over the last few months and now we continue our development. And in this video, I will cover how we can create additional units, how we can add more tanks in our game and organize everything into the so-called families. Families in Construct3 is a group of units that have similar behavior. For, so, for example, if you have units that move and units that shoot and they have kind of similar behavior, instead of writing the code all over again for each object in this family, we can use the whole family as a group and give those commands to the whole family. For example, I have tank 1 and I have tank 2. Without families, I would need to write the code for the selection of tank 1, how to give orders for it to move, and how it should behave when it sees, when it has line of sight of the enemies. And then I have to copy paste all over again, the same for tank 2. And then you have more tanks, then your code becomes really long and convoluted and it will be really hard to find anything and add more units. And what's even worse, you'll be duplicating the mistakes. So if you have a mistake, then it will be just copy pasting and it will be hard to find a solution and fix it all over again. To solve this, we'll be creating the family called tank family and we'll be putting all objects that belong to this family inside it. And similar behavior such as pathfinding, selection of units, basic animation and shooting, behavior when they see the enemy and the death, deduction of the health. All these things will be handled by the family. And if we need something specific, for example, I have a tank and I have a jeep. And jeep, for example, doesn't destroy the rocks, while tank does. So for such specific combination, we can write specific code, but everything else we can do within the family. So let me quickly show you how I organized it. This was really hard for me to understand. I was really struggling to wrap my head around the whole concept of the families. I've been using the advice from ChatGPT. I've been talking to Construct3 programmers. So this was really hard for me to get my brain around it. So finally, I understood everything. So let me share. Maybe it will be helpful for you as well. Here on the right side, we have families and I have my tank family, which includes a big wheel truck, a duck tank and the light tank. So if I have only three tanks in the game and the whole family has following behaviors. We have pathfinding, which will deal pathfinding for the whole family. We have line of sight and we have sign. Sign is used for animation, for shaking when we fire. Pin. We need pin, for example, for for the this big wheel truck uh, to have his gun on top. Bound to the layout as usual, so we stay in the game. And sign two is also for animation. It's like bouncing a little bit when we move to add a little bit of a movement. All these behaviors are on top of the family and not inside the specific units. So if we go to specific unit and check its behaviors, we have nothing here. But since they are already inside the family, they inherit the behavior. So the child is inheriting the behavior of the parent. And in this case, we also have several instant variables of the family. So you can see we have health. We have, if it's selected, boolean, true, false, we have prefx, 
If you remember, we use prefix to detect if we are moving right or left, and we set it mirrored. Then few extra things, as as recoil distance. Uh, goal coordinates, it's for us to remember where we are going, and fighting true false. All these are the family behaviors and instant variables, but we can change those also if we click. For example, big wheel truck have less health, just 99. And light tank and duck tank, for example, duck tank has different health as well, so it's possible to change. We can also set different speeds, for example. You can see uh, duck tank has, has uh, 150 maximum speed, while light tank is a little bit faster. And the truck is also a little bit faster. So you can still organize everything, you can still set different speeds. It's not a problem at all. This was my biggest struggle. I really struggled to understand how I can set different parameters if they're inside the family. But it's just inheriting the parameters from the family. So it makes sense, right? So now instead of writing code for each specific tank, we will be writing it for the whole family. Let me quickly show you my code. I will not go too much in depth. You can pause if you want and just study it more because it's quite long and complex and it took me a few weeks to do it so this is not something i can just explain in one minute but i'm going to show you everything as usual so you can learn if it helps for you you can copy some ideas i'll be help glad if you did or, and if you give me any suggestions how to improve it please let me know in the comments below so for example first of all we set different speeds for our units when they're created, I can make, for example, one more, my big wheel, replace objects, light tank, where is light tank, this big wheel. So big wheel track will be a little bit fast as well when it's created. This is how we set different speeds on creation. Next, our tank selection and movements here. Here we deal with the whole family, so we don't need to select specific units and this is code is the same as we did for our hero tank when we created our first tank many many weeks ago so this is exactly the same code i just changed the object to the family of the tanks all right now uh, we move the whole family again i changed the movement for the whole family instead of moving specific objects. Again, you can pause and study this code. It's exactly the same as we did before. So I'm not going to waste your time explaining it all over again. Basically, it's just checking the mouse click and if it's right click and it's not over our family, then we give the order to move and we set the coordinates. Then if we found pass, we set animation to driving and start going. We use tint to mark it green if we are selected. And this is one of the most important issues that I've been solving. I was having issues that my units were stuck during the way. So I give the order, they move a little bit and then they stop. And I didn't understand what's wrong because there were no obstacles. And I realized that Construct 3 somehow overloads in its pathfinding for no reason. And you have to put this simple order on pathfinding fail to find path and you have to give it this order to retry again. So we store our original coordinates where we were going and then if we fail to find path, the system will simply retry. And this solved all the issues. So this is the most helpful line of code for me. Then of course we need to do tank mirror. This is the same code as before. We check the coordinates. If we're moving left, we're mirrored. If we're moving right, we are not mirrored. If we are uh, overlapping with other units, we spread around. So for idle tank, we set idle animation and we disable our shaking, which we use using the sign. Now, we are, if we are moving, 
you are using sign behavior to make uh, this kind of shake like this if you're overlapping with water it will go slower if you're overlapping uh, with the flag we move around so we don't stand on top of the flag now the tanks should try to run over the infantry if they see enemy troops they should try to come and run over them instead of trying to fight now and this code is not done yet i need to fix how they face each other during the fight here we squish the enemies when we run over them Here is the sound when we start moving. We add sign animation, which makes it like this. Shake it and then makes boo sound. So for, for big wheel, wheel truck, we have wheels animation. For other tanks, we don't need it. Now we have code of fighting. This is similar to what we had before. All we need to do here is separate different types of tanks because uh, they have different weapons. For example, duck tank is going to use the rocket and uh, the light tank is just using the bullet. You can pause here and check if you want. I will not go over this again. We already discussed it when we were developing our robot shooting. It's very similar code. Now I add maneuvers against the tank so idea is if we face the enemy tank i don't want this to be like in all other games like we stand and shoot boom 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 and then the one with more health wins this is insanely boring in our case if we have especially one big tank and one small tank it has no chance if they just stand there it will take two bullets and die so idea is that he will try to go around maneuver try to avoid the shots and survive longer this is the coolest part of the game. This is a stranded tank on, in case it lost the orders, we get back to the orders. Not sure if we need this code, just in case. And finally, truck, tank tracks on sand. I th thought this would be much harder to develop, but it was quite, quite easy. So we create first the truck uh, sprite which is different variations of this truck something like this here you can see trucks it's basically a lot of animations of these sprites and then when we are moving along pass all we do every 0 0.0 seconds we are spawning these trucks on our way and our tanks have two extra origin points, for example, big wheel truck. As you can see, point 0.4 is for left wheel, point 0.5 is for the right wheel, somewhere there. And it will be generating the tracks from those. So when it's driving, see animation of driving, I added motion blur because this is a 2D game the trucks will be coming out of the wheels and staying behind and then i added some fade and randomization so the trucks fade away it looks pretty nice and what else we had here also we spawn trucks for the enemy units and if we have low health we start displaying a smoke on top of our tank an extra cherry on the pie when the tank is destroyed we have a broken turret coming and flying up in the sky spinning around and then crashing on top of the enemies and de deducting their health what we couldn't solve yet is the group wise finding so if we have a lot of tanks together they tend to overlap when they go construct recently released an update called group pathfinding but i didn't realize how to implement it so we start the path group and we set different parameters and then we're supposed to move and spread around 
So let's check quickly. So see if a lot of tanks go. So they're supposed to spread around depending on different parameters. So here is example. We stay all in the same place. And now I'll give an order for, to go somewhere here. And depending on the parameters, instead of all going together, they find different paths. And this is how we can spread them around a little bit, which will look much better. So now if we check in the game, I'm a one -man as you can see all our tanks are orders, behaving and obeying the orders. I can group select them all and give all the standard orders as Get before done, and they Finish will work him. just fine and shoot depending on their different weapons. Mm, too much fire here. No, <laughs> that's so cool, so much going on here. Each tank is firing its own weapon here. Let's check on this map. It's left stuff, so here we have the truck. As you can see, it's behaving with its turret on top. Love this one. Look how he's trying to maneuver around. Now he'll squish some arm. Oh, he died. Oh, and we had the turret which killed only another guy. This is cool. Now we have, a, have the duck tank. Let's show what we can do. We have here a greedy tank coming. This is duck tank. He has two, two weapons. The rocket launcher. The rocket launcher and the gun. Let's show. See, this is the gun, and also he has the rocket launcher. Okay, it's still not turning well enough to the correct position. Okay, it died, and of course we have the light tank, the light one. It's quite weak, but very fast. Okay, the enemy is trying to shoot grenades, and by the way we have night, next video I'll explain to you how we did the day and night change, oh look we squeezed the guy, we squeezed him, and now it's burning, the night lights come out, and zombies are coming, stay tuned for the next video how we are going to add zombies to the game so that's all for today guys all with the tanks and the tanks family i hope you found this helpful as usual let me know in the comments below what you think and how we can improve it better <laughs> and stay tuned for the next one where we get to add the zombies cheers bye Consider it done.